यस कम गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग मैम आदित्य हैव अ सीट थैंक यू सर आदित्य विथ ए डबल ए यस सर एनी न्यूमरोलॉजिकल कैलकुलेशंस नो सर एक्चुअली व्हेन वी प्रोनाउंस आदित्य इन हिंदी इट स्टार्ट्स विद अ मात्रा ऑफ आ हां सो सर माय पेरेंट्स थॉट इट प्रूडेंट टू पुट अ डबल ए इन माय नेम ओके आई आल्सो हैव टू सिस्टर्स बोथ ऑफ हूज नेम स्टार्ट विद अ डबल ए यस सर ऑलराइट सो आदित्य यू आर फ्रॉम जीरकपुर Yes, sir. Um, that is near the Tri City. Yes, sir. You have taken medical science as optional also and MBBS also. You have yes, done. Yes, sir. And uh, horology is your. Uh, so, what is exactly horology? Sir, About horology. About wristwatches. Sir, horology is the science and art of understanding and making wristwatches. Making wristwatches. Yes, sir. Okay. And hiking, blog writing, reading fiction. And you have been a leader also. chief coordinator also basketball captain also yes sir okay so um, first of all uh, let me ask you now pandit jawahar lal nehru and mahatma gandhi what kind of relationship the two enjoyed and were there any points of discord or ideological differences between the two can you cite some examples also सर जवाहरलाल नेहरू एंड महात्मा गांधी दे एंजॉयड अ वेरी गुड रिलेशनशिप महात्मा गांधी ट्रीटेड हिम जवाहरलाल नेहरू लाइक हिज नेक्स्ट सक्सेसर एंड ही आल्सो मेड हिम सो सर आल्सो द टू डिसएग्रीड ऑन सम पॉइंट्स फॉर एग्जांपल जवाहरलाल नेहरू वाज हेविली फोकस्ड ऑन इंडस्ट्रियलाइजेशन एंड मॉडर्नाइजेशन वाइल गांधी जी वॉन्टेड टू प्रमोट द ट्रडिशनल इंडस्ट्रीज एंड ही वॉज अ लिटल कॉन्जर्वेटिव इन दिस रिगार्ड सो आई थिंक गांधी जी वॉज अ लिटल कॉन्जर्वेटिव इन द अप्रोच वाइल जवाहरलाल नेहरू वॉन्टेड टू एम्ब्रेस मॉडर्निटी ओके वेरी गुड वॉट डू यू अंडरस्टैंड बाई एम एस एम ईज एंड वॉट इज देयर कंट्रीब्यूशन टू दिस कंट्री सर एम एस एम ईज आर द माइक्रो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंटरप्राइजेस Sir, they provide employment to a large proportion of our population, and they are the mainstay of our industrial sector at this point. Because India certainly has large industries, but a large contribution has been done by the MSMEs, and they help in employment generation and the overall economic growth, sir. Uh, does MSME form part of the Atmanirbhar Bharat injection package, which was given by the government? Sir, I do not recollect it, but sir, I think so. It was part of the package, sir. Okay. now britain uh, being out of european union do you think there is a possibility of britain forming a trade union you know with any other countries now that it is out of the european union certainly sir i think that britain has also given us some indications that it would like to engage in more free trade agreements with us because britain now looks to diversify its markets now that it is out of the european union it is also facing a, a little bit of an economic crisis because much of the trade that britain used to do freely with the eu is now hampered so i think britain should certainly look forward to new engagements and india is a key potential partner and can we both can mutually benefit from each other sir okay very good now what are the significant internal security threats in this country sir i think sir the first one is the left wing extremism mm -hmm. or the uh, militancy that is growing in, or the naxalism as it is called so secondly i think uh, like we saw day before yesterday what happened in punjab that there was the capture of a police station in ajnala in amritsar mm. so that is one of the internal security threats that has been started in india so i think okay uh, what is your opinion about the status of chandigarh and also syl yes sir sir chandigarh i think sir after the division of punjab in 1966 Chandigarh was made the common capital of both Punjab and Haryana and Haryana was provided a grant of rupees 10 crore and an additional loan taking capacity of 10 crore to build its own capital sir shrimati indira gandhi our erstwhile prime minister she had also uh, said that uh, chandigarh might be given to punjab and in the rajiv longobal accord of 1985 it also stated that chandigarh should be handed over to punjab but i think sir in the present scenario chandigarh has now more of a cosmopolitan culture mm. it has a mix of so many different cultures the central service rules have now been applied in chandigarh so i think sir the people of chandigarh want a status quo at this point mm. but i think sir uh, if punjab and haryana get together and they come to a common conclusion then i think haryana could be given a grant for setting up a new capital so you want that chandigarh should be transferred to punjab sir i personally believe that a status quo approach at would this point better. would be better sir so both of them should continue to have their capitals in chandigarh yes sir or else 
they both can be compensated if they mutually form. agree sir what about syl so the syl is the satluj yamuna link canal linking the satluj and the yamuna rivers in punjab and haryana from which the water will flow yeah, from satluj true. to yamuna what is your opinion about it? sir i think that punjab had said that it would complete its portion of the canal and haryana had completed its portion in 1980 and supreme court has also stated the same but recently sir uh, last month a meeting was held at the ministry of jal shakti between the cm of the two states in which the punjab cm had said that at the time of agreement they were getting 18 million acre feet of water but now they are getting 12.83 while haryana is getting 14 so although i do not know the credibility of these facts i think sir first a proper investigation should be done hmm. and in case the punjab farmers are getting less water i think sir because punjab and haryana both form the food basket of india and already the economic status and the agricultural status in punjab is failing so i think it would be unfair to the farmers of punjab if we continue with it although the correct method would be to continue with the canal but i think sir a proper research should be there as to how much water each state is getting so that okay. is no unfair very good now mci why it, it needed to be wound up and replaced by another institution what were the reasons leading to the winding up of mci sir actually mci was embroiled in a lot of corruption issues so the government thought it prudent to replace it with the national medical council <coughs> sir the national medical council it has 25 members while the mci had a 100 plus members but sir the issue with the new nmc is that 70% of its members are nominated by the central government so that is an issue while mci was majorly elected by the people but one good point about this is that the tenure of the nmc is limited to one year for uh, is for one tenure for each member while in the mci there was no limit to the number of tenures a member can hold so this will lead to more transparency okay. also sir nmc has started to overhaul the medical curriculum from batch 2019 and it has also introduced an element of ethics in the okay. curriculum so i think sir it is a good move also sir the beginning of the next exam i think is a way forward in the right direction must la- one last question to you if you become the collector if you become a civil servant and with your knowledge about uh, the mbbs and the uh, the health and the medical education with your background what improvements can you bring about in the working of the civil hospitals in the district where you will be posted sir first i think one of the main challenges in the healthcare in india today is the lack of awareness among the common population a study was conducted in haryana where it was found that only 11% of the adolescent girls knew about the reproductive health problems in their age and only 20% of the geriatric age group were aware of the comorbidities So I think sir the first step would be raising the awareness about the government schemes and the health problems that exist second would be sir increasing access because sir access in the rural areas sir it is only 35% for inpatient uh, inpatient admissions and 65% for opds so second would be sir increasing the access so third would be increasing the affordability because the out of pocket expenditure right like we know in the recent economic survey it was 45% which is a very high number so i think sir schemes like ayushman bharat should be pushed forward and sir fourth would be increasing accountability because sometimes sir cases of corruptions do arise between collusion between the doctors and the medical representatives so that should be tackled and the final point sir which i have personally witnessed last month when i went to visit my friend who is a medical officer in karsog in mandi was that sir there is a lack of infrastructure at the civil and the primary level the ecg machines are not working the autoclaves are not good so sir the doctors are not able to perform to their full potential so i think sir that needs to be done as well excellent very good thank you thank you okay aditya um, what is your comment on the fact that democracy survived in india and it did not survive in its neighborhood i think almost in all its neighbors even in nepal it is facing you know difficulties yes sir sir i think sir the strength of india is its dynamism we have changed with the changing times sir for example we brought about the 73rd and the 74th amendment which has brought about more power to the panchayati raj institutions leading to democratic decentralization at the same time i feel sir like in countries like pakistan and even myanmar there are deep states existing which does not exist in india which helps it to usher in democracy even better also i think sir we have performed well in the education sector and raising the citizens awareness so they are able to make informed choices about the voting so i think sir all of these along with the traditions that india has it has helped us to cultivate democracy and maintain it sir okay so 
continuing with the same discussion. Having said all this, do you still feel that Indian parliamentary democracy, parliamentary democracy, most specifically, is facing serious challenges? Yes, sir. We have seen in the cases of some states like Karnataka and Goa. No, no. Parliament. In the parliament also, sir. There have been instances of defection that have been on the rise. Sir, I think the anti-defection law needs to have an overhaul so that the parliamentary democracy is uh, observed. Also, sir, I think that the opposition needs to come together and provide a stronger front so that more transparency and accountability is present. What are the other factors which are a serious, uh, puts a serious, uh, you know, a question mark on the future of parliamentary democracy? Sir, I think that the role of the speaker should also be need to looked into because sir, there should be a time frame for certain decisions by the speaker that needs to be done. And I think, sir, that uh, some uh, issues like in the question hour and in the zero hour, some topics are sometimes snubbed and not discussed properly. I think, sir, that is why the opposition needs to be stronger so that more accountability... What about the functioning of parliamentary uh, committees? Yes, sir, the parliamentary standing committees should also be involved in the decision-making process, sir. Because most of the laws, they are being bypassed either in the form of maybe a money bill or something and the parliamentary standing committees are not given due time and consideration. Also, sir, later entries can be started in some committees so that some expert opinions can be granted to the bills. Okay. So what is the role of history in nation building? Do you agree with the idea of historical revisionism to inculcate the feeling of nationalism? Sir, I believe certainly, sir, a little amount of uh, us understanding our history is certainly necessary because it helps to achieve a sense of pride in ourselves towards our nation. But what about revisionism? Yes, sir, the instances are also seen in some cases about history being revised as because as we know, history is written by the winners. So sometimes the people who are in power, they might try to change history. But I think, sir, a comprehensive, uh, like for example, in some subjects in the medieval and ancient history, I think adequate coverage should be given to all the chapters so that people themselves can make an informed decision rather than being force-fed as to what is correct and what is not, sir. Okay, thank you. Thanks, sir. Have you heard of Balveer Divas? Balveer Divas. Sir, I have heard of it, but I do not exactly recollect, sir. Okay. <clears throat> it is related to the sons of Guru Gobind, Guru Gobind Singh. Yes, sir. Now, do you recollect? Yes, sir. So can you name the four sons of Guru Gobind Singh Ji? Yes, sir. Sir, these are the Char Sahib Zadas. Hmm. They are Sir Baba Zurabar Singh, Baba Fateh Singh, Baba Ajit Singh, and Sir Baba Jujar Singh. Okay. <clears throat> Is medicine an unethical profession? Certainly not, sir. I think medicine is one of the most ethical professions there is. But I think, sir, there are always some nefarious elements that might try to uh, harm the image of a particular uh, profession. I think that needs to be looked into, sir. But overall, I think, sir, medicine is a very noble profession and an ethical one, sir. A lot of hospitals these days keep those big bodybuilders. What are they called? Sir, Strong, tall guys, muscular fellows. Sir, I can tell you in the scenario of gyms, perhaps, sir, they are called bouncers. Bouncers. Why do the hospital need bouncers? Sir, actually, the cases of violence against doctors are on the rise. Why are the cases of violence against doctors? Sir, people are now getting more information via social media and on Google, mm -hmm. and they do not trust their health practitioners. Okay. So at times, sir, uh, they do not understand the gravity of the situation in the critical situation the patient is in and they take hasty decisions and they come to a conclusion on their own instead of listening to the doctors. So I think, sir, that is one reason that has led to the increasing violence against doctors. Is it true that the, like corporates, the hospitals also set their targets to raise revenue at the end of the financial year? Sir, I have not uh, worked in a corporate hospital, but sir, as, uh, but in our government setting, sir, there is no such thing, sir. What do you think of corporates? You, if I've heard you're a doctor, you also would have heard one way or the other. Sir, I think there have been instances in some cases where there have been news emerging that there have been targets set by corporate hospitals. In fact, some doctors certainly have to fulfill targets or else they will be terminated from their job. But I think, sir, this is more of a boost to the doctors to work even harder to achieve their targets rather than trying to uh, grasp patients in the name of just fulfilling That's the targets. That's your perception, but the patient's perception is that, you know, they're made to go through all kinds of tests which may not be necessary. Yes, sir. So that perception not correct? 
Sir, uh, in the government setting, I don't think that is correct. But sir, in the private setting, yes, there is some collusion between the <laughs> lab people and the doctors. And sometimes, very rarely, I would think like 10 in a thousand cases, maybe excessive tests are being done by some doctors. But I think that needs to be looked into via some stricter legislation, sir. All right. Uh, what is the strategic importance of Andaman and Nicobar Islands? Sir, uh, India has now moved forward towards a blue ocean diplomacy. Andaman and Nicobar Islands can play a key role in us understanding and better enhancing our cooperation in the Indian Ocean region. For example, the Indian Ocean Naval Symposium or the IORA. So I think, sir, Andaman and Nicobar Islands also it provides an element of tourism to India. And I think, sir, overall it can help us in engaging with the uh, blue ocean in the Indian Ocean because China is also looking forward to its hegemony in the Indian Ocean. So it can help us to counter it, sir. Recently, the uh, islands in the area of ANC were renamed. Uh, and on whose names were these islands renamed? Sir, uh, I think, sir, they were on the Parambir Chakra bodies, sir. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Aditya, Dr. Aditya. Uh, supposing I say that you are moving from an ethical profession of medicine to an unethical profession of civil services, how will you react? To this statement? Sir, I think like uh, uh, we discussed before, sir, doctors can be ethical and unethical, administrators can be ethical and unethical. But sir, I would think that I would personally move from being an ethical doctor to an ethical administrator, sir. Good. Now, you are leaving without having served uh, as a doctor even for a day? How come? The government has uh, subsidized your education. Thousands of rupees have been spent by the government as a subsidy. Sir, initially when I was in class 10th, sir, I was not aware about the civil services. My elder sister being a doctor, she motivated me to join the medical profession. Oh, I, I then started off with my MBBS, which I enjoyed thoroughly. And in my second year, sir, I met Dr. Nipun Jindal, who is a pass out from our college and currently the district collector of Kangra. He, sir, inspired me to try out for the civil services and he made me see that health was only one of the many depravities that is present in society. I can diversify and broaden my horizon in the civil services. Also, sir, during the COVID pandemic, we have seen that there is an increasing engagement between the health professionals and the administrators. And at times, sir, there was some miscommunication between the two. So I think, sir, a combination of a doctor and an administrator can be really wonderful. And, sir, so I feel that uh, the subsidy that the government has spent on me with me being an administrator via my social sector interventions, I think that I can give back to the society many times over. Uh, people say there is a lot of corruption in healthcare system all over the country, not only Punjab, but everywhere, even in the center also. Supposing you are appointed as the health secretary of Punjab, what kind of, what initiatives you will take to reform the system? Sir, in the short term. Corruption, particularly. Yes, sir. Sir, in the short term, I think I would move towards stricter legislation. The suspension or revocation of the license of such doctors who are caught should be there so that it sets a good precedent. But in the long run, sir, I think uh, being the health secretary of Punjab, I would send a recommendation to the National Medical Commission to, sir, include an element of ethics in our curriculum. Currently, sir, there is only a little bit of medical jurisprudence that is taught to us. And for example, like in the case of UPSC, there is a separate ethics exam. And for the US MLE, for admission into a US medical school, there is a separate exam for ethics. So I think, sir, an element of ethics or a separate subject if added to the medical curriculum can help us in engaging the young doctors who are from the ground itself. Also, sir, regular sensitization and awareness campaigns about ethics should be done for the established practitioners from time to time, sir. Very good. Aditya. Yes, ma'am. Aditya, do we import drugs or do we export drugs? Ma'am, we actually export the active pharmaceutical ingredients or the APIs from China and we heavily import such things. So you saying we import APIs from China? Yes, ma'am. Okay, and what, what, what do we export? Ma'am, we export the finished drugs or the generic drugs majorly to the African market, ma'am. All right. Uh, Aditya, can we get... Uh, by when do you think we'll be able to get over the drug bans that we have? Can we remo remove them and just move to all generic drugs? Is it possible? Ma'am, I think that uh, as we have discussed that the out-of-pocket expenditure is very high. So, ma'am, generic drugs is the need of the hour. But at the same time, ma'am, certain disorders like epilepsy and cardiac disorders, they need drugs that are of excellent quality because even a small dip in quality can lead to uh, the death of the patient. 
so i think for that uh, for those drugs only doctors generally recommend the branded drugs and it is really essential at this point of time but if proper quality control for the uh, generic drugs is done and we are assured of its quality i think we can move forward towards did you it, follow the budget this time ma'am i have read some points about it ma'am give me a snapshot of uh, india's economy right now as mentioned in the budget ma'am india is expected to grow at a, a rate of 6.8% ma'am the health sector it uh, last year had a budget of 1 lakh 7000 crore but this year it has decreased to 1 lakh 6000 crore which i think is a cause of concern also what about the forex ma'am the forex is around 550 billion it had touched an all time high of 600 billion last year but now it has subsequently decreased because of the geopolitical tensions that are existing and what now. about uh, current account deficit ma'am i know the fiscal deficit ma'am which is around 6.8% but ma'am i don't have any idea it's all that. right uh, i think i was just wondering does yoga cure any disease ma'am yoga certainly is very essential because most of the diseases that we have are lifestyle disorders like hypertension, diabetes, obesity, these are all lifestyle disorders. So yoga has been proven to reduce stress, calm the mind, and hence these lifestyle disorders can be totally eliminated by yoga, ma'am. Aditya, what can we do to uh, bring tribals into mainstream? And why have we failed at it? Ma'am, I think first of all, the Forest Rights Act should be properly implemented in letter and spirit so that the tribals get their due remuneration. Also, I think, ma'am, the minor forest produce can be expanded so that tribals get more of them. Also, I think, ma'am, percolation of the education, health uh, in the tribal sector can help them in integrating with the mainstream society. Setting up small cottage industries or MSMEs will help them to trade better and integrate as a part of India, ma'am. Aditya, my last question to you would be, you're very young. How old are you? Ma'am, I'm 24 right now. You're 24, ma'am. 24. Let's say you become uh, the civil servant that you want to become. And you join your office and there's a pregnant woman who comes late every day. Uh, you, people have suggested her to take maternity leave, but she's saving it for later on. Because you see, you only get a few months of it. In that scenario, what will you do? I think I will first discuss with my colleague that what is the issue? Why is she not able to come on time? If there is something that we can do, for example, sending a car, maybe. So that, uh, for for example, if her travel is full you of hassles... You will hassle, send a car for her? Ma'am, if her travel is full of hassles and she is not able to come timely due to some transport issue, then I think, ma'am, we can provide... But wouldn't that be a wastage of resources of uh, exchequer? But I think, ma'am, if one or two hours of that employee is wasted every day, she could contribute better to our economy and the society, ma'am. So I think in case, if that is not possible... And, and you she are also misappropriating the resources in that case, aren't you? Ma are you authorized to send car for someone? who is not entitled for it? Ma'am, I think that uh, if it is a necessity for an employee that he or she is physically not able to come to the office and it is of dire emergency, then I think we can do that. But at the same time, I think, sir, ma'am, a letter of application can be sent. But will it be sustainable, the solution you are proposing? Ma'am, it would be sustainable in the short term only, not in the medium to long term. I think, ma'am, an application should be sent to the concerned department if the leave okay, can be granted Okay, let's end this conversation earlier, with you telling me the biggest failure of your life. The biggest failure? Ma'am, I do not see uh, things as failures or successes. I just see them as part of my experiences. Even my coming here or my succeeding or not succeeding in the civil services will not affect me as a success or a failure. Rather, it will be an experience from which I will draw. I draw experiences from my successes as well as my failures, ma'am. So I don't think I have any So you've never success. failed? Ma'am, uh, I s uh, actually do not see them as successes right. or failures, ma'am. Thank failures, you. Ma Thank you. Certainly so. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Unacademy. Let's crack it.